Hey everyone, um, so we're going to go through chapter 20, which starts on page 666 of your textbook. Um, I like the diagram that's there on page 666. Um, it shows you the difference between the pulmonary and the um, systemic circuits. What I suggest doing, once you get some of the basic vocabulary down, take your finger and trace the blood through these circuits. So you understand how these circuits kind of ping pong back and forth. Um, if you were, you know, Joey little little blop, drop of blood, you know, little red blood cell Joey, and uh, you start off maybe in the right atrium, go to the right ventricle, go out through the pulmonary circulation, pulmonary arteries to the pulmonary capillaries, come back to the pulmonary veins, the left atrium, left ventricle, etc. There are valves in there that are involved um, that you'll be reading about in the next couple of pages, but um, I suggest doing that to get those circuits down and understand the pathway. You can also use like post-its or note cards and write um, like left atrium on this and then left ventricle on this and mitral valve here and tricuspid valve here and then the next one is uh, pulmonary veins and then pulmonary arteries, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have all these post-its that you can put in order and rearrange so that you can make the circuit and, and kind of read it out um, or work it out, I should say. So. Um, that's kind of the gist of the introduction of this chapter. Then you get into basic heart anatomy. It's all straight memorization. One of the hardest, trickiest things to understand is that your heart is sitting in a bag, right? That bag is called the epicardium or pericardium. It's the same thing, pericardium, epicardium. Uh, remember, the pericardium is a visceral membrane, so it has two layers, right? The visceral and the parietal layer. That visceral layer actually sits on the surface of the heart. It doesn't come off of it. Um, and then, of course, you have the parietal pericardium, and then in between the visceral and parietal um, is pericardial fluid, which is there to lubricate as that heart is pumping along so that there's no friction or heat generated from that. Um, you also have um, the uh, actual layout of the heart, if you look at the external anatomy of the heart here, page 670, uh, what a lot of students do with this page would be to photocopy it uh, or just Google for a blank image of the, if a proper anatomically correct heart uh, and then take the labels off and then practice labeling it yourself. Now for our purposes, um, I'm not going to give you a diagram or, on any test or quizzes, so you would have to recognize what I'm asking for um, based on the context of, of the question. So it, I wouldn't give you any diagrams and actually have you identify them like that, but you do need to understand where everything is and what it does um, for the tests and quizzes. Then we get into coronary circulation. So um, of course the aorta is that major artery leaving the left atrium, right, through the aortic semilunar valve, uh, left ventricle, and um, did I say left atrium? Sorry, left ventricle. Um, and as that aorta comes it, it comes up and um, kind of branches at the top, right, those three main blood vessels coming off of, of the, the aortic arch. Before it gets there, though, in the ascending aorta, there are these little tiny holes called the aortic sinuses, and that is where the coronary cir circulation originates, and that's what's going to give way to your right and left coronary arteries that branch and branch and branch and form what's called your coronary circulation. Now coronary circulation is important because that's the blood that's going to be delivered to your heart muscle cells, right? Just like you have blood vessels going to all of your muscles and all of the parts of your body, well you also need blood vessels going to your heart muscle. So the blood comes up and leaves the heart and then gets rerouted um, to those heart muscle cells through the right and left coronary arteries you should know the names of them, you should be familiar with them, the right circumflex, right, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All of your um, smaller branching arteries are all important to know. And then you have the venous circulation, right, all going back into the great cardiac vein, dumping into um, that, that coronary sinus on the, the posterior side of the right atrium. Um, so let's see. There are some other pieces of heart anatomy that are of note. Um, of course, we mentioned the right and left atria. The atria are the small, kind of thinner walled uh, ventricles, uh, or thinner walled um, holes, on, uh, chambers, I should say, on the superior uh, area of the heart. And then the ventricles are, are inferior to that. Um, 
let's see, the valves that are in between, you have your two, two types of semilunar valves. These are your pulmonary valve and your aortic valve. These are leaving the ventricles, right? And they're called semilunar because they kind of work like this, like a little half moon going back and forth. And then you have what's called your tricuspid valve on your right side and your bicuspid valve on your left side. The, I remember that because the word right has a T in it and so does tricuspid. So right has a T in it. I know left has a T in it also, but if you just remember right has a T in it, um, that will help you remember that on the right side is the tricuspid valve, which means on your left side is the bicuspid valve, also known as the semi, or also known as the mitral valve. Sorry about that. Um, and those valves are called atrioventricular valves because they're in between the atrium and ventricles. Um, they're held in place and they are unidirectional, which means they only go in one direction. And that's to prevent the backflow of blood up into the atrium um, when pressure is building in the ventricles as they contract. So you see um, on page 674 uh, a little bit of the contraction cycle on that left side of the heart. So you can see, and I guess I'll, I have my whiteboard that I can break out again, but I think that brought more confusion than, than simplicity. So, um, so here's the pulmonary veins coming back in from our, our pulmonary circulation, dumping into the left atrium here. And then here is our bicuspid valve, which is open in this case. And basically that blood is just flowing in and filling up, kind of like filling in a bowl almost, right? And notice this semilunar valve is closed, right? So that, that aortic valve is closed, the bicuspid valve is open. Well, not all of the valves are open at any given time. Only the AV valves can be open at once or the semilunar valves can be open at once, not, not at the same time. So once that bicuspid valve closes, this ventricle can squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and start to build pressure until finally poof, that semilunar valve opens and all the blood can spurt out and go out to the rest of the body. So it's building pressure kind of like a, a volcano almost. Um, and, that, and that's what has to happen in order for the contraction to be efficient. If the valves aren't closing properly, um, then the blood's not going to pump properly. The person might have uh, extreme fatigue or might have to have a valve replaced or um, might have part of their conduction cycle um, interrupted. So let's stop here and I'll make another video in just a minute. Oops.